yeah, I can show this reel because I don't know if it's copyrighted or not. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's from a TLC show. I don't know. But it's really fucking funny. It's just like they're talking about how they need to make cars bigger. And there's like this lady that's huge and she's trying to get into this vehicle. And it looks like a, it's like a Corolla or something like that. Or maybe it's an SUV. I can't actually remember. I'll have to find the clip again. And hopefully I could link it in this video if I find it. If I if it's not in the video description, I'm sorry I couldn't find it. But yeah, it's just a girl that she just literally couldn't fit into this vehicle. And they're like, oh my God, we need to get bigger vehicles. And, and then the, her husband, who's just like, he's a big guy, but he's not like obese, fat. Like, he might be but he's just tall he's like one of those big guys like Yao Ming right he's just he's just a big dude and he's like trying to help her and she's like, she's like help me help me because her legs stuck apparently and <laughs> it's like she's like don't don't let me fall and then she like falls to the ground and like she's trying to get up and she's like I really don't want to have to call the doctor to get up and it's like oh my god if you if you fall and like you don't know if you can ever get back up you know should that be your wake-up call and as far as vehicles are concerned, I mean, yeah, sorry, they don't make vehicles for like bigger people like that. You know what I mean? There's a certain, you know, even air, even airplanes, there's a certain point where it's like you're too big for the seat. I mean, it just, it's, they're made for normal human beings, not, and like this lady's quite massive. And like, you know, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to fat shame before we'll get that out of the way right now. I'm not trying to fat shame. It's just like, it's it's ironic that you know when people are that huge it's like no the world should change for me they, they, they should make vehicles bigger it's like no well you'll have to like for her husband who's just incredibly tall obviously he'd have to get like a custom seat or something right like there are struggles that people like that have that are really big and i know like i i used to have like an ex-girlfriend and her dad was he was tall but he, he was obese too but he's also tall and like he just he drove a van because it was the only vehicle he could really fit in comfortably. You know, it's just like you got to like, sorry, you can't maybe drive the Durango or the F Toyota Corolla, something small like that. If you can't fit in, I mean, that's just the way she goes. You got to kind of buy things you can fit in. It's just uh, it's just funny to watch these. It's it's actually well, it's funny, but it's also kind of sad, like how how much like TLC exploits people and like. People love that show, like 300 Pound Life, you know, Big Fat Fabulous Life. I don't think that's TLC. I think that's a different, it might be TLC, I don't know. But it's all these shows, right? And the whole point of the show is technically making fun of fat people, right? But it's like, no, we're not doing that. We're just showing you the reality of it. It's like, no, people don't watch it to be like, you know, there's not a single person alive watching my 500, 600 pound life, and you're just sitting there going, "Yeah, this is horrible." The way these people live, it's just terrible. No, you're sitting there going, "Ha ha ha ha!" You fat fuck, you can't even get out of your bed. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, back to Not Rich, Just Board, episode number 99. This is our last day as a double man, as a two digits. There's going to be three digits from now on for the ne for the next, you know, whatever episodes. It'll be 900 episodes, I guess. <laughs> then it'll be four digits. So, you know, we got, we got a ways to go before we hit critical mass like that, but you know, I mean, obviously by that point we'll be the number one podcast in Canada, like we've been goaling and manifesting for the last couple of weeks. I'm sending it out here again. Home number one podcast in Canada. Home number one podcast in Canada. <laughs> Episode hundred is gonna be fun as fuck. Tune in next week. Um, either way, yeah. And just so you guys know, I I wasn't try I wasn't trying, wasn't. Trying to fat shame people. I just think I just thought that whole that whole video there was just you get it's very clearly added drama. Like how somebody how how do you get your foot stuck under like under the steering wheel? It just, it just looks fake as fuck, right? It's like 
you just know it's fake and they play it up for the drama and it's just i don't know it, it, it kind of just makes me sad more than anything and and honestly the world it, like if i was that big like i want to change right now i feel terrible right now i'm like look in the mirror i'm like you are fat as hell get your shit together and i'm honestly probably not even that big compared to well i am not that big compared to some of those guys but like i can't imagine if i was that big like i'd just be on my deathbed i'd be like no I, i'm done i'm dead like i'd be like i feel bad eating anything so it's just and again i know there's lots of struggles guys there's thyroid blah 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 all these like you know a lot of them they're real conditions that's correct but a lot of them are treatable a lot of them it's like you could you could there's a way back from this you just got to put in some work and some effort and yeah like i said it's just it's just kind of sad to watch honestly but Episode 99, we're going to move past the fat shaming because, you know, I already get enough shit from everybody. We're going to move into some other fun stuff. <laughs> There's one fun thing. It was a Toyota commercial that got banned. I think it was in Europe it got banned. But the reason it got banned is because it showed a, uh, it showed this, sorry, my chair. I'm going to just, there. Okay, it's done. So just move my chairs down. I have to move my, when I'm gaming. I have to have my chair, like the armrests, I have to have them up because then my forearms are level with the table and I can grab my mouse or my keyboard just nice. And I don't have to, you know, get that old carpal tunnel arm going on. It's great. <laughs> but when I'm on the podcast, when I'm just recording, I got the mic in my face nice and close and I'm just kind of sitting there and my hands are just awkward. And I just, I, f I have to play with those armrests. And if they're up, they make a bunch of noise. And if they're down, it's just good. So I just, I just got to remember to leave them down every time I do a podcast. So <laughs> just stop fucking with them. <laughs> you crazy asshole. Uh, either way, this Toyota commercial, it was banned. I think it was banned in the UK. I might be wrong about the where it was. It, it, it's somewhere across the pond, as they say. But it was banned because in the commercial, it showed this Toyota going basically four by four right because that, that that's what I don't, I don't know about you guys but I, that's what every truck commercial does for me every truck commercial it's always about them going over rocks right it's you're trying to show what your truck this is a, this is a tough f-150 this is what this truck can do oh like a rock oh i love that. you guys anybody who grew up in the 90s you will know that shit you remember those old it was the F-150 commercials, and they just had, like, a rock playing. And it was always just <laughs> this F-150 just climbing mountains, essentially, going through, like, a fjord or across, like, a river embankment. And it's like, oh, like a rock. It's like, get the new Ford F-150. They're just so classic, those commercials. But now, because we're all eco-friendly and it's all in the good grace of God to protect the green earth, um... They had to censor this commercial and ban it. Well, they didn't ban it because it never aired. It just, they got sent the tape, right? Like, here's our commercial. You want to put it on TV? And yeah, it got rejected because the, it's, well, it's toilet. I don't remember what truck it is, but it's one of their new trucks. It's not like the Tundra or anything like that. It's, um, it's a new truck. But it was driving off road and it was driving, you know, like they always do, all that cool stuff just to show what the truck can do, because that's what you do with trucks, all right? You're a rough and tumble, big boy, some big balls. That's what you do. You drive over weird shit. But it got banned because of the environmental. It's showing it's not very env environmentally conscious to be driving over, you know, shrubs and trees and out in the wild. It's polluting and stuff. And it's like, ugh. Like, and it's like they treat people stupid. Like, when you see those commercials, again, it's a marketing gimmick. It's a marketing gimmick gimmick to make you want to buy those trucks. It's like, oh, this is the new Ford Raptor. This is the new Chevy Silverado. This is the new GMC. You know, it's like, this is the new truck. And it, look at it. It's so tough. You know how tough this truck is? It can go up sand dunes. You know how tough this truck is? The biggest snowstorms ever. It can just go through there. The jungle? No problem. I took my GMC Sierra everywhere. Right through Nicaragua, all the way up, to, like the Nile River, everywhere. 
This shit goes anywhere. But it's just selling it, right? But these idiots at these sources, they actually think it's like, they're like, oh my God, it's encouraging people to drive through the forest and, <laughs> you know, do all this stuff. It's like, nobody does that, all right? It's just marketing, all right? It's just marketing. It's just like when you're kids and you got like, you know, street sharks and shit like that. And it showed them like on a beach, right? Or they'd show them. It's just to make the toys look cooler. It's just to make the things look cooler. It's like, yeah, it's pretty cool if it's just, oh, it's driving down the road or it's driving down a city street. That's cool. But you know what's even cooler? Watching your truck drive through a desert, you know, maybe get like a tsunami behind it. Stuff like that. It's just cool. It's not encouraging. Pe- I don't think it's, I, I don't think so anyway. You guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's encouraging people to go, you know, take their brand new F-150 into the rainforest and go kill some capuchin monkeys. <laughs> I think that's a little crazy to think, but I mean, whatever to each their own, I guess. But either way, this Toyota commercial has been banned. It's been rejected. So sorry, I guess we'll have to see what they come up with next <laughs> uh, when they, you know, decide to make their next commercial. Uh, another, another another small thing that was just weird was um, I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about uh, World of Warcraft Season of Discovery. Uh, Season of Discovery has come out. It's playable now. But to me, it's not playable. It's fucking stupid. So the whole point of, you know, Season of Discovery is it's it's lower level cap and it's different. They basically change the world. And, and you could do anything with your character. Like you can have a, you can have a, a, a rogue or a mage you know something that's typically a damage character and they could tank by find you'll find some sort of a secret chest in the world it's cool it's a cool idea and it's like you find things in the wild that give you abilities that you wouldn't normally have at that level or abilities that you wouldn't normally have at all and it's just it's kind of a neat idea for a different gameplay loop for classic wow so i understand that but the weird thing is there's kind of a weird social thing going on right now because the reason I'm not trying it more, I wanted to try it a little bit more since it did come out and I happen to have a subscription right now because I've been playing Classic. I did kind of want to play it, but when I logged in, there is such a fucking fight to get mobs. Because, you know, you log in, it's all about questing, right? It's all about doing a quest, killing monsters, collecting loot, stuff like that. Get experience, you level up. That's what you do in MMOs. But because Season of Discovery is new and they only have like six servers for it, it's congested as hell. So every server is just packed to the gills. I happen to try something that, to me, is a less popular starting zone which was the undead. I chose an undead warrior and it was unplayable. It was absolutely unplayable. There are so many people on the server that you couldn't kill mobs. You basically, and they have, keep in mind, they have hyper spawns on those spawn, on, on the spawns, hyper spawns, meaning they spawn at, a, at an exaggerated rate. Like in, in normal classic WoW, you know, maybe a, a, a mob, when you kill it, maybe it has a spawn timer of, you know, 20 seconds or 30 seconds or a minute, you know, it depends on the mob, right? Normally trash mobs, like normal guys you'd find, especially in caves. I think they have like a 30 second time or something like that, or 45, maybe. Charge complete. Stupid mobs that are really out there, like boss mobs and stuff. Usually they have a higher spawn rate, like a minute and a half, but on hyper spawns, I think it's like 10 seconds, like 30 seconds max. For a boss or something like that but it's, they're quick you kill something sometimes you kill something it's back immediately it's just another one was killed and it just chose that spawn location but even with that even with hyper spawning you can't get kills you can't get mobs and i just like to me that's i'm sorry that's not fun to just sit there like the starting zone in wow because i'm kind of a savage a starting zone in wow which is like level one to six that should take you about, like, if you're taking your time, it should take an hour, you know, an hour and change. That's if you're taking your time. If I'm just going fucking balls to the wall, man on a mission, I can get out of there in half an hour easily. But the way that everything is slowed down to a snail's pace with all the people in the server, 
it's it's ridiculous. I think I played that character for two hours and I got to level four maybe. And that's just because I could just I, I could get a spawn here and there, just barely. And just it seems like a cool game mode. It seems interesting, but I just can't handle it. And again, that's one of the lower to me, the undead. That's one of the lower, it's not one of the races most people pick. The busy races are the humans on the Alliance. Night Elves are usually pretty popular. And Orcs, Orcs and Trolls for, for the Horde. Those are the really popular, the really popular areas. By far, the most popular is the human starting zone. By a landslide in Classic. Because it's just so easy and it's so accessible. Everybody loves Elwyn Forest and that whole area. But I didn't even try that. I just tried Horde because I knew they'd be busy servers. So I just want to try. I, and I went on the least busy server. It was still full, but it was the, one of the ones that was, it actually didn't have a queue to get in. The other ones had thousands of players in a queue waiting to get in. This one didn't even have a queue to get in. And I still was fighting tooth and nail. In a, like I couldn't imagine being on a busy, the busiest server and going to the human starting zone. It'd be ridiculous. But that's why. The reason I'm talking about it right now is because there's this whole social thing going on, like I mentioned earlier, and people are making memes about it, which is funny, but there's this whole social thing, which is really interesting to me, that people are actually waiting in line for mobs to do a quest, and you can look this up online, you can look up any kind of, people have made reels about it in YouTube videos. But people are actually, there's this one that I watched today, and it was in the, the human starting zone. And there's people literally, they formed a line, and they're all trying to kill Garrick Padfoot, which Garrick is the defiance leader that you got to kill in the starting zone. He's like the first, you know, mini boss that you fight, the first kind of hard mob that has, you know, he has minions next to him, so he's a little bit harder. But it's literally a line, and the line, it's actually people just lined up in a line and it's the weirdest thing ever because you don't have to do that you know if you're a mage and you're seventh in line and garrick spawns if you be the first one to click your fire blast and you get damage on him he's yours i mean so it's just it's interesting and i'm sure there are some guys that were skipping the line and stuff like that but I just find it really interesting that they're actually forming a line to get these quests done. That's how bad it is. And I'm like, I just, it's so weird that it was working for some people. People were, obviously some people were skipping the line, being dicks, whatever. But it was just interesting to watch these characters in a fucking game. And they're forming an actual line. It looks like a Walmart checkout. But it's to kill an NPC. <laughs> it's just hilarious to watch. So if you guys just, I don't know, if you Google like WoW Season of Discovery uh, lineups or quest lineups, it'll pop up. It's really, really funny to watch. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> that they Like more ridiculous that they're able to do it more than anything. But either way. That's that's really all I had to say about that. You guys should check that out. It's it's really funny, it's especially the meme where somebody put the Elon Musk thing, where Elon was talking about the whole Disney thing, advertising on X, and it's like when someone tries to get me to wait in line for a quest, and it's Elon going, "Go fuck yourself, go fuck yourself." <laughs> it's really funny. I should also talk about that because that whole thing happened. I think it was a New York Times interview that he was doing. And it's funny because the guy was trying to roast Elon about advertising, being like, well, they're advertising on your platform and they're giving you money, talking about Disney and Bob. What's his name? Bob I Bob Iker? Bob Iser? I, I can't remember. He's the guy that makes all decisions for Disney, I believe. Bob Iker, I think. Let's just Google it. We have a fucking supercomputer right in front of us here. Who owns Disney? Walt Disney. What the fuck? I'm just kidding. No, it's... Uh, yeah, Robert. Okay, yeah, Robert Iger. Uh, yeah. I guess he took over in 2022. That's pretty new. Yeah. I guess they call him Bob because he calls him Bob in the video. Bob Iger. But Robert is, you know, the long form of Bob, so that makes sense. But, yeah, he's talking about how... 
the the reporters basically like don't you want them to advertise on your platform he's like no don't advertise he's like just just don't advertise and basically saying if the, if you want to try to buy me with money like blackmail me go fuck yourself and i think that's really awesome and the ironic the whole ironic thing that a lot of those crazy lefties have to say online is they always talk about how everybody on the right is captured by billionaires you know we're just captured and we're just enamored and we love these billionaires it's like it's not that he's a billionaire it's that he's a billionaire with actually some fucking morals and he's actually doing some good shit and he's standing up for shit because companies like disney and all those executives that that's the thing they want to try to buy you they the advertising and all that that's all it, without that they're nothing that's what people don't realize is like oh they're going after he's going after disney what an asshole it's like yeah but like it's because he what 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 we don't realize as consumers is that we hold all the power we hold all the power we do the problem is it's not a hive mind, right? I, we're not a fucking bunch of honeybees. We can't just communicate psychically and be like, cancel your Disney Plus subscription. Cancel your Disney Plus sub- subscription. I can't say subscription, apparently. I'm just you know, half retarded, I guess. But, um, you know, we can't talk like that. But we do have that power. If everybody tomorrow decided, you know what? Screw Disney Plus. I'm done with it. And everybody tomorrow canceled Disney Plus, they would go under. They would because they rely on us. But the problem is when it comes to these advertisements and all that kind of stuff, they want control and another, another power, you know, another powerful, I don't know if he's a billionaire. He's definitely a multimillionaire. Dana White, the owner of the UFC, he said multiple times how he's had sponsors try to tell him what to do. Like somebody that sponsors them and they'll be like, you know, you said this and this on Twitter or something, take it down right now. And Dana said, like, go fuck yourself. And that's exactly it because the sponsorship, yes, they're paying Dana money. Same with the whole Disney thing on Twitter. Yes, Disney's paying, you know, paying to advertise on there. But the thing is, they're successful without them. You don't need to tell them what to do. You know, it's different being a low, uh, you know, a low level person that's just getting sponsorships and that's all they got really. Yeah. Those companies will blackmail you because you got no other option. But when it comes to these big guys, like the UFC is huge. It's the number one fighting organization in the world. Twitter is the biggest social media platform in the world. Well, X, right? It's the biggest thing in the world. And so they have the cards. They have that as cards. You know what I mean? They can't, they don't need to be, they don't need Disney's money to be successful. And UFC, you know, I don't know who the sponsor was that told, I, I, he didn't say it in the podcast that I heard him talking about it, but you know, whatever, if it's fucking Under Armour or Powerade, you know, something like that, if, if they don't want to pay the money to control them, they'll be like, oh, fuck you, you said something offensive on Twitter, I'm backing out. Guess what, bitch, Gatorade's right there. All right. That's just the reality of it. You back out, there's going to be somebody else that wants that spot because it's valuable advertising because there's so many eyeballs on it. Same with Twitter. Disney backs out because what Elon said, whatever, fucking Netflix will be there. Netflix backs out, it'll be Hulu. There's always going to be somebody to advertise. Like, that's the thing. They have more power than they think. And somebody like Elon is actually just standing up against them because... These advertisers shouldn't be telling people what to do, what they can and cannot say. That's just absolutely ridiculous. It should be a free platform and everybody should be allowed to do their own thing. So, I don't know. I I thought the whole Elon thing, again, I'm being a mark for billionaires, I guess, but I just thought it was, you know, I thought it's cool that he actually was standing up to Bob Iger and those guys and saying, like, well, whatever. Go fuck yourself. If you... If you want to pull your ads because of something I said or something I'm allowing to happen on my platform, fucking do it. All the power to you. But either way, congrats, Elon Musk. 
The other thing that's going on, uh, and I'll show you guys this clip here, but I have a, I have a couple other things related to this. Sorry, guys, we're delving back into politics. I can't stay away from it. I'm, I'm sorry, but I am a. I've told you guys before. I'm a proud Canadian. I really am. I love Canada. I love living here. But the first step to any problem is realizing you have one, right? First step to solving any problem, and Canada just has a big problem. It's fucking terrible. And there's this guy that made a he made a reel. Um it's hold on. What the heck is his name? Oh, guy who owns Disney. It popped up again. Yeah, there's this let me just see here. Okay, I found yeah, I found it here. Sorry. My thing wasn't loading. I hope I have internet. Oh, I do have internet. Okay, I guess that was just a glitch in the matrix. We're fine. But there's this um, entrepreneur on, it's Pamela Smith on uh, on Instagram. Her her handle is Black Home, Black Home Educators, and she's verified. So I don't, I don't know if that means anything, but yeah, she's, I don't know. Either way, this just comes from her. So I just want to give the credit to that because I think that's important to give credit. Well, credit's due. But it came from that Instagram page, and it's this guy reacting to this girl uh, talking about it's a lady that makes over 30 bucks an hour, but she survives on sandwiches, like peanut butter sandwiches, because she can't afford anything else after she pays all of her bills. And it's just this guy reacting to it and then asking people, is it that bad in Canada? Like Canadians, I'm talking to you guys. Is it that bad in Canada? And I actually messaged the guy. I said, yeah, yeah, it is that fucking bad in Canada. It's getting crazy. It's getting out of control. It's getting to the part point where it's going to get, like, people are going to fucking revolt. And that's not even, like, hyperbole or anything crazy. Is it? That's serious. Like, Christmas is around the corner. And how many of you Canadians right now? How many? I'm talking to all you guys. How many of you people have all your presents and you're just financially stable? How many of you guys had to use a credit card to buy all your gifts or any of your gifts? How many of you just have, can't afford gifts in general? I'll bet you there's a lot. I'll bet you there's a lot. I know I'm struggling. I'm definitely fucking, star, fucking struggling. You know? And I'm not even going that crazy on gifts this year. It's mostly just the kids, but it's just financially we're screwed here. And this lady, I think she lives in the Toronto area. Uh, obviously she didn't dox herself or anything, but that's definitely one of the more hot spots, one of the more expensive spots in Canada, but it's just it. Yeah. To answer your question, person who's reacting to that video. Yes, it is that bad in Canada. It's crazy. Things are way too expensive. And I just, I feel bad because I just, I don't know the way back until, I think I've said this before too, even after the liberals are out, once Trudeau's out, what happens then? Like, it's going to take years to recover from this. It's going to take years. And I just, I can't stand it. Every time... Every time I go to the grocery store right now, I get depressed. I get depressed. Not depressed. Depressed. Like crazy. Because I just see everything is just ridiculously expensive. Like I like you basically have to be one of these, you know, crazy YouTube kids making billions. Well, millions anyway. You basically have to be a, just to survive in Canada. It's ridiculous. Like buying a home, an actual home, forget about it. That's that's gone. That's gone for anybody modern. And unless they, you know, unless you happen to hit it big with an inheritance or you happen to make it big on the internet, like fucking forget it. Unless something gets done. But we have all this 
bullshit going on right now. And I'm sorry, I hate to pick on the liberal government because I do it a lot. And, you know, people say I'm very, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, bias, right? I'm bias. It's like, well, yes, I am more conservative. I, you know, I live in Western Canada. So, you know, that's kind of a given usually. Yes, I am more conservative leaning when it comes to politics, but a lot of stuff I believe in is also liberal for, you know, a lot of shit. But I just don't see how anybody believes in this guy or thinks he's a, he's a good candidate. Like, even the most hardcore liberal people, I get it. You want to be inclusive. You want all that stuff. That's great. But, like, can somebody really come on the show? I want you to. I want you to come on here. Not episode 100, because we're busy. We got that planned already. <laughs> but 101, 102, 103, 104. Sounds like I'm listing radio stations, but any one of those. You come on here, and you say to me, with a straight face, why you think Trudeau has been good for Canada or what he's done that's good. And I will, you know, I'll look into it. I'll see if you're right. But so far, even people I know who voted for him, even people I know who were just diehard constituents of the Liberal Party, they can't figure out a reason. They're like, yeah, yeah, we fucked up. But I just, I don't get it who looks at the last eight years of canada and is like yeah we're doing all right you know and i'm not saying under harper everything was sunshine and rainbows obviously we had some huge recessions where which weren't necessarily the government's fault but even then during the recession like the 08 and what was it 13 14 15 14? i don't know we had the, that oil crisis there where oil crashed and before that, we had the housing crash and all kinds of shit going on. We've had like 11 financial crises in our life as uh, millennials. It's kind of insane. But, you know, we've had all this stuff going on. And even back then, I felt like I had more control over my life. I had more money. I definitely had more fun, you know, like everything went a lot farther and it does it's no joke when people say hundred dollars is the new twenty dollars in canada because it really is like twenty dollars doesn't get you shit i literally today uh i didn't have time to make coffee so i was like whatever i'll get a coffee and a cookie at tim hortons you know on the way to drive where i'm going for the day and so i went there and i'm like oh i got i have a five dollar bill on my console i'll just use that and the coffee and the fucking cookie not even an extra large coffee either just a large coffee it was like decaf of course because i'm still off caffeine decaffeinated gang it's only because i want to see if i have a psychedelic trip after three months but we'll see <laughs> either way we can talk about that later um you know i just got Large, large coffee decaf and a cookie. And it was five sixty. My five dollars. My five fucking dollar bill. Couldn't afford a coffee and a cookie. Not even a not even a jumbo big old dream cookie or something like that, right? Just a regular ass chocolate chip cookie and a large coffee. Five dollars does not cover that. That is fucking horse shit. No joke. In like 2006, if I went to McDonald's, I could get like a, you get like a coffee and like three cheeseburgers and fries for five dollars. Like it was crazy. I mean, that might be an exaggeration. It'd probably be like seven dollars, but still, you can get some crazy shit for five dollars there used to be always like five dollar meal deal stuff like that now it's like that five dollar meal deal is like sixteen dollars ten dollars like it's not an exaggeration that's the thing people always look at people like pierre polyev and all these conservative guys on their tiktoks or whatever well i don't think he does tiktok i think he just does reels but you know 
stuff like that. They always look and like, like Trudeau has increased prices by 300%. And people are like, oh, that's overblown. That's bullshit. That's statistics that you guys are, you know, cherry picking. It's like, no, it really has. If you look at the prices, 300% sounds about right. $5 meal deal, $15. Jug of milk that used to be $3 is now creeping up to $9. Like, I think I just got one. It was $6.94 for a jug of milk. $6.94 for a four liter. If I saw, if, if I could go back in time to Cody from 2010, 2012 even, if I told him that I was buying a jug of milk for six dollars, let alone almost seven, like it would blow it blow his fucking mind. It blow his feeble SCP playing mind. Trying to be the next horror, the big horror YouTuber. <laughs> you know, it's just it's absolutely insane. I cannot believe how out of control the price have gotten. It's absolutely crazy and the reason i'm talking about all this stuff and how crazy things are going too is because you know justin's trying jt just trudeau he's trying to look like the good guy talking about how he wants to get the big grocery stores on board with price fixing right to help them moderate the prices and he said if they don't moderate the prices he's gonna threaten to tax them he said, like, we'll do everything up to and including a tax. That's how serious we are about this. But it's like, hey, JT, hey, hey, is this thing on? Is this thing on? Yeah, good. Son, listen. You can't solve everything with a f- fucking tax. You moron. I'm sorry. That's rude, but it's true. You can't just tax everything. Because guess what? Oh, well, if you don't lower your prices, I'm going to tax you. Well, guess what? Guess what, Justin? Guess what? Where the fuck do you think that those taxes are going to go? Who do you think is going to end up paying for those? It's going to be us. It's going to be the people at the bottom and the middle buying the fucking groceries, you idiot. Yeah, you tax the groceries. What do you think? They're going to just eat your tax and be like, damn it, he showed us. Checkmate. The center of the go board. We're done. No, no, no. It's they're gonna fucking up their prices more to accommodate your little tax. It's kind of like a little thing you made called the carbon tax, if you remember that one. It's a, kind of a famous one up here in Canada. It uh yeah, kind of rose the prices of everything. Because guess what? It turns out companies care about one thing, and that's profit. Now, if you're gonna tax them to take out of their profit do you think they're just going to eat it no they're not gonna no they're not just going to eat the extra taxes they're gonna pass that on to the consumer that's just how it goes like it it actually makes me angry just hearing that guy talk just just hearing the way he just so flippantly talks about things and he he talks so confidently and like he knows what he's doing, but he just doesn't understand business. He doesn't understand that it's just that basic, like, again, I think they call it trickle-down economics, but it only makes sense. If you want to charge them more or up, same with the carbon tax, their truckers have to pay more to get the groceries to the store. Well, they're not going to eat that cost. They're going to add that cost to the groceries. The same is with any other tax, too. So stop fucking making up these stupid taxes because they're not going to help anybody. That's this whole thing. Whereas that's where, again, the liberal stuff for me, you know, gay people should have rights. That's fine. Same with trans people. You want to have your rights? You know, that's fine. Making everybody, you know, making it like a, a findable offense or you can be taken off of the internet for not affirming somebody's made up identity, that's a little too far for me. I that's where I draw the line. Like just no. You can be whatever you want to be. I'm fine with that. I'm cool with that. I like that. That's great. You go be you. And I'll even call you. If you're if you're if you want to be called a girl, I'll even entertain it. Like I you know it's fine. If if you're a guy and you identify as a girl 
and vice versa. Yes, I will call you a she. That's fine. I don't have no problem with that. But the problem I have is when you start policing people and making making it illegal for them to call you the other thing. Because then that just draws a line in the sand and that gets worse and worse. It snowballs. Because then pretty pretty soon it's Zezer, it's Zazam, all this stuff, right? All these made-up pronouns. Because they're fucking made up. They are. And pretty soon that stuff will be in law. Well, and then, then you're out of control, right? It's, it's a snowball effect that people don't really understand. So, you know, on the liberal side of things, I don't care. Do what you want. Be what you want. I respect that. That's fine. But their whole thing is big government. And government should control everything. And taxes, taxes, taxes. And that's where, economically speaking, I just conservative just makes so much more sense. It really does. Having a surplus for Canada, and then you can keep everything down, keep the taxes down. Yes, maybe there's a less social programs, but like I agree with social programs, and I think there should be some. But I think a lot of social programs that liberals also fund are bullshit. And some of them, like the homelessness thing, that's just a money maker. That's all that is. It'll never be solved because people make way too much money on it. So it's just, like I said, I agree socially with a lot of the liberal shit. I get it. But financially speaking, I'm sorry. But the liberals have fucked us. They fucked us hard. And Canada is in a real tight spot. And we're in for a rough couple decades. Like it's it's I don't see it getting better in the next decade. There's unless something crazy happens. You know, it's just we got to get back to normal. And that's why I honestly I'm openly a supporter of Pierre Polyev because I think he does have a common sense approach to everything, economics. I think it's a good idea to axe the tax. I think it's a good idea just to lower tax in general, lower everything, lower prices. Because if you lower all that stuff, because honestly, they're not doing shit all for the environment. And anything that Canada is doing for the environment, that's part of these whole carbon tax incentives, which again, aren't doing anything. Um, China's going to triple and double, double, triple, quadruple, septuple, all of our pollution. You can't stop them. There's no way. So we might as well do what we can with what we got. It's fine. Because we're not going to make a fucking difference with China. Unless you somehow get China on board with all these green accords. Sorry. But our piddly ass carbon tax ain't going to do shit. So either way. I'm going to leave you guys with one little video here. Um, I thought this was a good fight back. It's um, well I'll let the, I'll let the video play out. And then, and then you guys can. You guys can, uh, you know, we'll discuss it for a second after. But this was in the House of Commons in Canada. And yeah, the Conservative MP refused to apologize for saying that Trudeau and his minions lied. Now, the, the, House, the, the, the Honorable Speaker of the House, you can just tell this guy's quite biased towards the Liberals, for sure. He's supposed to be unbiased. The Speaker's... If you're American watching this, you don't understand Canadian politics. The 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 Canadian the Speaker of the House is like the Speaker. He's just like relaying whose turn it is to talk, basically. And he's kind of like he speaks for all Canadians, and then he listens to the Conservatives and he listens to the Liberals, and then he relays what they say. And you know, he basically is like the peacekeeper of debates. Uh, like a mini judge of sorts. But you could tell that this guy's like a little bit biased towards the liberals. So he's probably on Trudeau's pave. You know, he's probably on his fucking whatever he called. He's on the pay. He's on the take. But either way, the conservative MP kind of loses shit here. And I thought it was really cool because this is what we need. This is what we need is people actually vocally standing out against the prime minister. But just watch how the speaker just tries to eviscerate him and he doesn't back down and keep in mind he says something about you know we don't allow that word here and i don't understand what word some people are saying it's because he said he called them minions 
because he refers to Trudeau and his minions as in the liberals. So I think it was the minions part that he's not allowed to say or was offensive, but I'm actually not sure. But let's just watch a clip here. Make sure the volume's up. The honorable member for Battle River Crowfoot. Mr. Speaker, I know for a fact that farmers are asking that minister to axe the carbon tax. That PM promised that the Senate would be independent, but the actions this past week proved that that is a complete farce. We know he bullied his senators. The PM himself was on the phone over the weekend telling them they had to gut Bill C-234. The Prime Minister lied and his minions continue to lie about whoa, whoa. same time I did knows full well that you can't use that word. I would say the Honourable Member should retract that and apologize. The Honourable Member Battle River Crowfoot. Mr. Speaker, I will not apologize to that Prime Minister when he continues to lie about the independence of the Senate. I'm asking the Honourable Member to apologize for the second time and retract that word. The Honourable Member knows full well you cannot use that word in this chamber. So this is the last, uh, this is the last opportunity. The Honourable Member of Battle River Crowfoot, will you be retracting that? It's the truth. It's the truth. I will not apologize to the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Couric, would you mind leaving us today? Yeah, so basically they, yeah, they start clapping and all the bullshit. That was uh, Damien Kirik. He's the MP for, um, for yeah, Battle River Crowfoot. So I, you could tell, like I said, you could tell he's like, oh, you could tell we don't, we don't use that word here. I'm thinking he was talking about minion because I don't think he was talking about liar, but it's just, it is, it is true. He's spitting straight facts. And that's the, that's the whole point that, I was trying to make why I like that so much was because I think we do need to get tougher. We need to stop standing on ceremonial shit, right? Get rid of the ceremonial bullshit. Get down to real grit. Be like, no, you're a fucking idiot. Stuff like that. Like, it's always like the official, like, can't swear, can't do this, can't get angry. You know, it's like, you gotta be all, use your professional language. Like, you're not even allowed to, like, you're not even allowed to, when you're debating in the House Commons, you're not even allowed to, you're supposed to just say, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, or the Honorable Prime Minister, stuff like that. You can't use their names, because Trudeau actually got in trouble a couple weeks back for using Pierre Polyev's name because he was talking about Pierre Polyev doing, he's like, the conservatives are using that uh, as a platform for Pierre Polyev's, you know, Instagram account. And then, you know, that he got in trouble for being like, you're, you're, you're not supposed to refer to people's names. You know that. So it's, it's just a weird system that we have. And it's just like, oh, whatever. But either way, I think, you know, good on Damien for standing up and he didn't apologize because that's the thing. You shouldn't apologize for spitting straight facts. And it's it, it's really true. It is true. And I'm sorry if I got a little bit too angry and political in this one. Again, <laughs> I always say I'm not going to, but then I do. But it's just, it's, that's the thing. We need some more of this tough shit. We need people to be tough and stand up against this tyrannical government really that's what they're trying to be so i guess we'll see what happens in the next vote but either way i'm going to stop rambling on here guys i appreciate you guys listening and yeah it's crazy i can't believe we're creeping up on the 100th episode again i've got a plan i'm not going to be alone on the 100th episode i've got some special friends coming in and i think we're going to you know, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good chat. It'll probably be longer than normal because it'll be, a you know, kind of a special thing. But 
it's going to be, yeah, I think it's going to be super fun, and I'm really looking forward to it. I can't believe we've been, I I had my Instagram post about the two-year anniversary of the podcast, because two-year anniversary was on December 2nd, which was, you know, this will be coming up on, today is the 7th, this will be uploaded on, so, you know, five days ago, approximately, you know, it's just, it's crazy that it's been two years already it really doesn't feel like two years since i started the podcast and i do feel like i've gotten better at it at least a little bit you know i'm still not the best but i'm working towards the best and we're manifesting number one podcast in canada right boys there's actually nobody behind me right now i just like to yell right boys yeah it's kind of cringe sorry guys but either way, I do appreciate it. I'm noticing some more subs on YouTube. People are coming in. I like that. That's cool. And more people are watching on Spotify. We're creeping up on a 1,000 plays. Uh, I hope we get there soon. That'd be awesome. But, yeah, I hope you guys appreciate episode 100 when it comes out, too. It's going to be it's gonna be super fun, and it's going to be nostalgic for some people because there's some old, you know, some old guests coming back. And it's going to be... It's going to be a good time. And just thanks, guys, for the support. Really, it's been crazy to see the amount of, like, nice messages I got. And on my two-year post, there was people, some people talking about it, some people DMing me and, you know, just being like, oh, two, two years, bro, keep grinding. And I'm like, hey, that's that's how, the way I do it. I'm just, I, I like doing it. It's fun, you know? It's a one, one, one hour approximately a week. Not that big of a commitment, so... I've reached out to some other people for guest spots in the future, and hopefully they get back to me. That'd be really cool. And, yeah, we're going to have another – we'll have another 100 before we know it, guys. So, either way, I'm rambling on again. I tend to do that. It's kind of the nature of podcasting. But thank you guys, as usual, for watching or listening. Well, I guess there's nothing to watch yet. We're working on that. I'm working on getting a webcam for the YouTube just so you guys know. Well, I have a I have a webcam, but I want to get like a green screen set up for it so it's kind of like more professional looking and cool. So, I'll keep you updated when that happens, but either way, here's to another 100 guys. Appreciate it. As always, links to all social media are in the description below. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye guys. <laughs>